This is the CBS News Special Report. Campaign 76. Race for the White House. Countdown to November. This portion is sponsored by Merrill Lynch. Merrill Lynch is bullish on America. As Gerald Ford and Jimmy Carter race for the White House, Republicans wait for Carter to stumble. They think his Achilles heel is what they perceive to be a vagueness on the issues. Carter strategists, of course, say not so. He's not fuzzy, they say. They argue he's taking a new approach to politics that goes beyond specific issues. They call it a thematic campaign that deals with the basic longings of Americans for leadership, confidence in government, a return to basic moral values. Listen as Carter Survey Director Pat Cadell speaks to campaign workers in Atlanta. Well, we ran a thematic campaign. We, 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 I think we can admit to that. Uh, not because we were not concerned about issues. The point was their feeling was unless you solve more basic problems, unless you dealt with the question of how we got here and how do we get out of here, unless you dealt with that overriding concern of what had happened to America, there was no reason to deal with the specific issue. In Jimmy Carter's presidential campaign, there will still be only one overriding theme or issue above all others, moral leadership. More than anything else, Carter's organization wants the voters to perceive him as the man best suited to lead the nation. But moral leadership, like beauty, lies in the eye of the beholder. So the campaign staff here at Atlanta headquarters has picked specific issues to reinforce the image of Jimmy Carter they hope to project. Hold on. Carter Mondale issues, may I help you? It's not that Carter doesn't have positions on issues. At headquarters, there are position papers covering 90 specific issues, all neatly stacked and filed and available for the asking. But all these hundreds of thousands of words and all of the Democratic Party platform are subordinate to Jimmy Carter's basic issues, which he himself has identified as leadership and trust. These somewhat abstract qualities suggest the ideas which, according to Issues Director Stuart Eisenstadt, Carter has stressed from the beginning. The need for an open and responsive government, the need for competent leadership, uh, the need to root out inefficiency, the need to reorganize the government, to end duplication and waste, uh, the need to restore a government that cares about people. Those are Carter's major themes echoed time and again by the people of his campaign, who feel that articulating these prescriptions for a better society calls for a certain style. It will not be a campaign of attack. It will, of course, be a campaign that will attempt to indicate the shortcomings of the uh, Nixon and Ford administrations. But it will be a positive campaign in which we set out our vision of America and what we see as necessary for the country. In terms of traditional political issues, the Carter campaign believes the administration is most vulnerable in its management of the economy. Inflation and unemployment, according to economic coordinator Jerry Jasinowski, are part of the same problem. Inflation and unemployment are, are twin evils, and it is really a, an intellectual mistake and a, a serious uh, social uh, policy mistake to try to separate the two, to try to play off... Uh, uh, by, by trying to keep large numbers of unemployed people to reduce inflation. We've seen that that doesn't work. Um, you really have to go at both of those problems simultaneously, and you have to try to uh, put people to work, make them more productive, uh, reduce uh, federal budget deficits, um, all as a part of a package, and some of that will help on the inflation side. But even basic political issues like these will be linked to the theme. We're going to stress these um, very important old-fashioned themes of work, efficiency, uh, productivity, fairness, and we're going to try to tie our policy proposals to those old-fashioned values. When Carter goes after the administration's economic policies, he will blame the nation's budget deficit on high unemployment and the welfare and compensation costs that result. It is a traditional position for a Democratic candidate. But to counter the charge that Democrats are big spenders, Carter will promise a balanced budget by the end of his first term. And to stave off criticism of the cost of proposed new programs in the Democratic platform, 
he will pledge no new spending on major items such as health care, housing, and jobs until the money becomes available. Much of what Carter will have to say about foreign affairs will be directed at Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. Carter will make it very clear that he would never allow any one man to exercise the kind of influence Kissinger has enjoyed or to operate in the same style. We'll talk about the need for a new foreign policy, one that is not made secretly, not implemented secretly. We'll talk about the need for a foreign policy which reflects the best ideals of our country, which does not uh, consent to the Sonnenfeld doctrine that in effect gives up uh, the rights of Eastern European people. We'll talk about the need for a foreign policy that is not covert as it was in Chile uh, and in Laos and in Cambodia. Beyond the question of style in foreign policy, Carter has indicated that he would concentrate on new commitments to U.S. third world relations. And he has promised that he would develop new policies to deal with such problems as energy resources and world hunger. But discussion of foreign affairs, like everything else in the campaign, will also be built around a theme, the theme of openness. The danger of running a thematic campaign, however, is that it is open to charges of fuzziness on the issues. To counter that, Issues Director Eisenstadt says there will be plenty of specific proposals. He points to Carter's appearance before the American Legion Convention, where the candidate made a calculated decision to advocate pardons for draft resistors and was roundly booed. We're not fudging. We intend to go before groups and set out what our positions are. We want the American people to, to vote on us on the basis of uh, the character of the candidate and the things that he said, regardless of uh, where he said them. There are other complex emotional issues which are almost certain to surface during the campaign. Abortion, busing, and gun control, for example. But survey director Pat Cadell doesn't believe that they'll cause problems for Jimmy Carter. Most people, when they vote for president, are not going to vote on the basis of, uh, uh, of those individual issues. They're going to vote on the character and the perception that, that they have of the candidates and their overall compatibility with the candidates. And our tendency is to find that those uh, issues in terms of a, a general election for president <coughs> are not that critical in terms of the vote decision. Character and perception. For Carter and his staff, these are the intangibles on which the election turns, on which they are counting for victory. It worked in the primaries. Campaign director Hamilton Jordan believes it will work once again. The issues are not created by candidates. The issues are exist in the minds of the voters to be understood or misunderstood by candidates. And I think this year that many of the issues facing the American people are so complex that a lot of people are looking beyond the given set of issues and looking for qualities in a president. And I think the qualities that they're, they're searching for are, are integrity and confidence. And I think those are qualities that, uh, that uh, Jimmy Carter possesses and, uh, and projects. And I think that's why he has a he has a good chance of being elected president in November.